Hey everyone, Roll over here, back with part 2 of my MLS scouting video for the 2022 season. Now if you missed part 1, do go and check that out, link is in the description down below. And in that video I looked at some options for the goalkeeper and defender slots. Now already since I've made that video actually, one of the players I recommended, Michael Nelson, he has doubled in price since, so hopefully some of you who watched that decided to jump on him while he was available at his cheaper price. And then I also went over the best time to buy these players as well as how the Ethereum price can affect things in the market and so on, so again, do check it out if you haven't. This video I'll be looking at various options from youth players to budget options for threshold teams and of course the tried and true players so without further ado let's take a look at the midfielders I'm monitoring. Looking at some youth prospects for next season I think Paxton Pomikau of FC Dallas could be a very tidy option for a decent price. Now there is a friend of the channel who's an FC Dallas fan Backman so I'm sure if he watches the video he'll be able to inform people a bit better than I can in the comments but basically FC Dallas have mainly utilised Pomikau out on the wide on the left side. He could do with a few more contributions to help his so five scores. Looking here we can see on Serra data, their average, if not a bit inconsistent, but you know, he's only young and has another two years left on his deal, so hopefully he can step into a bit of a bigger role for Dallas next season and really hits his stride. A tad pricey at 0.03 Ethereum for what you are getting right now, but again, that's part of the parcel of these young players. You have to take a risk on them sometimes, and I think we could see bigger things from Pamikau next season. Now, a slightly more expensive youth option is Cole Bassett, who comes in at about 0.07 Ethereum, and that's for good reason. He's a very consistent player for Colorado at such a young young age who you can see gets some very tidy scores in so five. His game time did trail off a bit towards the end of last season what with Colorado having such a large squad. There's lots of competition in midfield but I do expect them to maybe trim that a bit in the off season and I'm sure Bassett will have a key role to play for them. The risk here is will he get the game time needed to make this a worthwhile purchase but if Bassett does play initially next season I'd expect this to be a steal at 0.07 Ethereum so definitely a young option to consider. And then two immediate cheap options in the bang average category are Annabelle Godoy and Jonathan and Dos Santos, both of whom come in at 0.02 Ethereum. So, you know, all they cost is a game week's worth of hitting the second threshold in the All-Star Rare Divisions, and just looking at their rolling scores, you can see they both consistently hit around the 40 to 50 mark. Their contract situations are a bit unclear at the moment, so I'd keep an eye out on that for both of them. And I'd only consider these players for a budget threshold hitting team. You know, if you put these players in the America Division 4 area, you're probably just not going to get the scores you need to really compete at a high level. But they're both very viable options for hitting those thresholds, so keep an eye on them if they stay at their respective clubs next season as options. Now anyone who saw part 1 knows I'm a big fan of players who perform very well in the all round score bracket. These types of players are great for boosting your so5 scores, especially if you're using these players for a threshold team. So using so Red data scouting feature, if we sort on MLS midfielders based on the highest all round scores in the last 15 games, immediately here a player that stands out to me is Keaton Parks of New York City, and that's mainly due to the prices we're looking at for these types of midfielders. Straight away you can see Xiao Paolo 0.16 Ethereum, Carlos Gill is over half an Ethereum, Rusnak and Barco, two other great options in midfielder fairly pricey as well. And you know, that's not for good reason. They're great players who perform very well statistically as attacking players. They get decent amounts of goals and assists for what they do, so this is reflected in their price being that high. But then you have Keaton Parks here who's coming in at 0.06 Ethereum, so comparatively a really great deal. Now if we look at transfer marks, we can see he's more of a defensive midfielder, so he doesn't get as many goals or assists, but we can see he's a stalwart performer who regularly plays for New York City, gets a lot of game time. He did get injured towards the end of last season, but I'm sure he'll be a key part of New York going forward and for his price and the all-round scores he typically gets I think he's a very budget-friendly option for lots of teams out there so again definitely consider him and a player of a similar ilk is Christian Roldan again like Parks he scores pretty decently when it comes to all-round scores for a more affordable price in midfield he comes in at about 0.08 Ethereum right now and his so five scores are pretty good a bit patchy in spots but overall he consistently hits over 60 points for Seattle Sounders and just looking at transfer marks we can see he consistently gets a lot of game time. He had a patch in the middle where he wasn't in the squad and this was because he was with the US national team for the Gold Cup. So barring that we can see he is almost always getting at 90 minutes for Seattle and he even had stints as their captain so you know I'm sure he'll be a big part of their team next season. And then if we're going to look at some pricier options we have to consider Zellerayan and Atuesta. Some very decent choices both going for similar prices of about 0.13 Ethereum right now and looking at Sarah data on their rolling average scores we can see both players influence games and score very well a decent amount of the time. Atuesta has had a few issues with 
injuries this season, but from when I've seen him play, you know, he's electric going forward. He can really influence the game in some big ways. If he can stay injury free, I'm sure he'll be a big, big player for LAFC next season. Similar with Zeller Ryan, great attacking talent who really influences games when he plays. The added bonus for Zeller Ryan as well is that he now represents Armenia. So for those qualification games, he's definitely going to be an option for your squads in the off peak times. So yeah, both are very good options, a bit pricier than some of the other options I've mentioned, but that's for good reason. You pay for what you get and you'll definitely get something good with these two. And then moving on to the forwards, the first youth prospect I'm looking at is someone I've already got on my club actually, and that's Cameron Harper of the New York Red Bulls. He comes in at under 0.01 Ethereum, so really cheap. I don't expect anything special from him next season or for him to really get loads of game time. I just know that he's highly thought of at, at New York Red Bulls, as well as from when he was a youngster back at Celtic even. So I think if you have any expendable Ethereum, it could just be worth picking one of him up for the future if you plan on being in Sora for the long term. Another decent youth option who is more likely to get some consistent game time next season is Benji Kikan who is coming in at about 0.05 Ethereum. Now we can see here on Transfermarkt he got a nice run in the team towards the end of last season and San Jose Earthquakes have also recently lost two other forward options in Wondolowski and Fierro. Wondolowski is retiring and Fierro has since left the club so this just gives Kakanovic more chances of getting a starting spot next season. His all-round scores are nothing special but he has shown he's capable of popping up with a few goals here and there so especially for managers looking at getting a forward and who's slightly on the cheaper side I think Kakanovic is a great shout. And being that he's under 23 years old I'm sure if he goes on a good run of scoring form his price will rocket up from its current spot so I'm definitely looking at picking one of him up myself in the coming months. And then looking at some other somewhat regular budget options for your sides as a forward, I'd consider Kiri Shelton, Yu Kubo and Michael Barrios, all of whom come in at around 0.03 Ethereum. Kiri Shelton had a lot of minutes towards the tail end of last season due to Alan Pulido's injury, so whether he'll retain a spot in the attack next season remains to be seen, but you know, when he plays he's a solid option to have. He does pop up with goals and assists here and there, so he seems to be a middle of the road kind of player. He is contracted for next season, so hopefully he is yet to hit his best form for sporting. Now Kubo is someone who could probably do with notching up a few more contributions for Cincinnati but overall he scores consistently around that 40 to 50 mark. The problem with Kubo is that Cincinnati don't seem to know what his best position is so just looking here at transfer marks we can see his positions are all over the place. He plays anywhere from central midfield to right wing back to defensive midfield so something to consider there. He's not an out and out forward but he does get a lot of minutes and is contracted for next season so if he can get a bit more consistency in his position and in his scores he's definitely a viable budget option to consider. And then Michael Barris, again, another player contracted for next season. He got eight goals and six assists in 34 games last season, so a respectable return for a player who primarily operates as a winger. Now, his game time did trail off towards the end of last season, but the games come thick and fast at the start of the season, so I'm sure he will be an important player for Colorado early doors. And then another player I'm going to note is Josef Martinez, who's coming in at 0.12 Ethereum. He's a previous MLS player of the season winner. He's had trouble with crucial injuries in the last season, but he looks to have overcome that. He's picked up some minutes towards the end of the second half of the season and if he gets back to fitness and can consistently play for Atlanta next season I'm sure he'll be a big part of turning their fortunes around. He's obviously a great player who's just had an off season so I think at 0.12 Ethereum he's a bit of a steal right now we just have to hope he avoids any injuries going forward. And then looking at some of the other top tier options what would an MLS scouting video be without Gustavo Boo? Now his goals and assists fired New England Revolution to the top of the Eastern Conference last season he absolutely crushed it and is coming in at a very respectable 0.19 Ethereum which seems like a a lot but I mean if you just look at his so five scores combined with how well New England dominated the league last season I think he's definitely someone you want to consider if you have the Ethereum for it. He's contracted for another two years so all of this leads me to say that his price is brilliant right now I would definitely consider getting him to lead your line and of course if you want Gustavo Boo then why not partner him up with Adam Buxa who got 16 goals last season for New England as well and he is coming in at 0.14 Ethereum right now so those two could be a nice combination up top. Buxa's profile did shoot up a bit in recent months due to his good performances for Poland as well as in the league but at 0.14 Ethereum it is a reasonable price and with Boo and Buxa back next season New England should continue to be a major force in the Eastern Division and then I'm just going to mention Jesus Ferreira as another top tier option he's become a key player for Dallas last season with some great so five scores he's very pricey at 0.275 Ethereum what with his young age being a defining factor in that so I'd say he's a great player for the under 23 leagues but probably you can get better players for cheaper value if you're going for the America leagues but I thought I'd mention him nonetheless as he's a very talented 
talented football player. And I'm just going to end the video off by highlighting Andre Shine Yashiki as an option to avoid. I dislike this man, I do not like him as a football player. If I ever met him on the street in real life, I mean, I wouldn't do anything, that'd be rude, I wouldn't punch him or anything, I just don't like him as a footballer. For anyone who's followed my Road to Glory series early doors, you'll know why. This is a player who's consistently cost me with his piss poor scores, so yeah, avoid this man's card like the plague. Although, I'm hoping by me saying this, he's low-key going to become goaded next season, you know, become the Brazilian Neymar of the MLS, so to speak, and bang some goals. Fingers crossed. But yeah, if you weren't aware why I dislike Shiny Ashiki so much, then that means you need to check out my Server Road to Glory series by subscribing to the channel, you know, because that's always fun and enjoyable for me. Server.com slash r slash Royal Livy for my referral code. Anyone who uses that is a verified G. And do like and comment with your thoughts down below. Hopefully you found this useful. And I'm looking forward to the 2022 MLS season with eager anticipation. I'm hoping you all are as well. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.